Whoa, what's up with you, Furiosa? I'm in a huff, that's what, because of what just happened in the garage. Charles in charge of our days and our nights. What? Nuh-uh. How am I supposed to? Come on! Some clown, clown parked his clown car in Captain Holt's spot and halfway into mine. What a clown! Sporty? Mm-hmm. Convertible? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, I hate people who drive sports cars. You're not Gloria Estefan, and this isn't Miami. Charles. Hey, Captain, get ready to join him in the Huff Zone. No. Some creep had the gall. I saw you drove Gertie to work this morning, huh, Captain? Oh, yes, Kevin and I finally brought her up from the country. Gertie is our convertible. I think you'd like her. She's a real peppy broad. Oh, I didn't realize that was your car. My car? Uh, Raymond Hope may be on the title, but no man can own her spirit. Anyway, I'm sorry, Boyle, I interrupted you. You were saying something about some creep. Just some strangler that I was arrested. I was talking about some strangler that I arrested. Well, good job. Put the paperwork on my desk. Thank you. <sighs> Great. Now I have to go find a strangler. Gina. Gina. Gina, I screwed up big time. Charles, given your daily life experiences, you're gonna have to be more specific. Gertie! Gertie! There's only one option for me. Burn my face off with acid and disappear forever. Yes, you should do that. Or you could just tell him what happened. I mean, he parked in two spots. It's kind of his fault. Just have some B-bone boil. You know that's my smallest bone. Come on, it's just a car. He's not gonna be that mad. Son of a bitch! Okay, I misjudged that one. Oh, what did he do to you, Gertie? What did he do? It was an accident, sir. Yes, an accident. The buffoon's apology. This is your fault, mister. Interesting. Charles, do you feel that's the case? Um, your car is pretty far over the line. Mm. So, it's kind of your fault, too. Pass the blame. The buffoonery is endless. You're gonna pay for what you've done. And it won't be cheap. They'll have to custom mix the color because they no longer make raspberry sherbet. Ah, oh, chuckles. You're looking even more broken than usual. Yeah, I should have never tried to stand up to Captain Holt. Oh, why don't I just beg for mercy? It's my signature move, the Charles. No, you are actually in the right in this sitch. The captain is being irrational, but he's about to learn himself a lesson, right? About now. Oh my! Ow. Timed it perfectly. What? What did you do to my cupcake? This is yours? Why on earth is your cupcake on my chair? Because it's very special to me, so I can put it wherever I want. This is your fault. Now you have to buy me a new cupcake. Well, this is outrageous. You expect me to avoid. Oh. I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do. The cupcake was Gertie. Yes. Your butt was Charles's car. Yes. The chair was the parking space. Yes, I get it. Your office was the garage. Yes, I'm telling you, I understand the lesson. And I was the brilliant Gina Linetti in both scenarios. All right, we're done here. Okay. You're a great captain. Boyle, I thought you should know. I just got Gertie back from the garage. She looks as good as new. Better even, because after 12 years, they finally got the Annie Lennox cassette out of the tape player. Oh, I love her. Here's a check for the full amount. You don't owe me anything. It was my fault, and I behaved poorly, as Gina made abundantly clear. Oh, speaking of, you still owe me $14 for that cupcake. 